friends let's see a very simple technique to detect anomalies in time series data to do this we can use any time series forecasting model with confidence interval feature okay for this example we are going to use a foundation model called time gpt from nixla in a previous video we have covered some of these uh, model called time gpt okay all right so import the libraries and then uh, we read some sample data we have the time stamp and the time series value it's a daily granular data all right so we just plot the data this is how it looks like now we want to detect the anomalies in this uh, series so it's a two step process in step 1 we use a time series forecasting model to forecast all these data points okay so we are not forecasting into the future but we use the same data to forecast so here we are using this foundation model the way it works is we use a few points at the very beginning to forecast the next data point and then we include the next data point we use again the data at the beginning to forecast the following data point okay it's similar to how these auto regressive uh, large language models works right for example if we say today is a then today is a the three words are used to predict the next word let's say the next word is beautiful okay and then all four words today is a beautiful so all these four words are used to predict the following word let's say the following word is day okay so similarly for example let's say here we have 100 data points so we use the first 100 data points to forecast 101th data point and then we use 101 data points which include the latest forecasted point to forecast the 102th data point okay so that's how this auto regressive model works whether in uh, large language or in time series okay all right so that's step number 1 and in step number 2 okay uh, in step number 1 in addition to the forecast we also compute the confidence interval okay so for a given confidence uh, score we will compute the lower bound and the upper bound in the forecasts and then in step number 2 we check if the actual value is within these bounds or not if it is within the bounds we classify that point as normal otherwise as anomaly okay we will see how it is all right so we simply call this detect anomalies which does both the things forecast compute the confidence interval as step number 1 and in step number 2 uh, it compare the actual versus the score uh, the confidence interval okay so here we have the forecasts uh, which is called this time gpt the forecasted value at this time stamp and then by default uh, it uses this 99% confidence interval so we are using very high confidence interval that means our lower and upper bounds will be quite far from the actual forecasted value okay so here we have the lower and upper value now what we do is so at this point we will check what's the actual value in the original data set and if that actual value lie within these upper and lower bounds we classify it as a normal point which is zero if it lies outside this lower to upper range then we classify or label that point as anomaly 
Okay, so let's see how it looks like. All right, so here we are plotting both the original data frame as well as uh, this derived uh, R forecasted data frame with the confidence scores or the confidence interval, right? So the blue one, the actual values, the pink one uh, are the predictions. And then we have this 99% uh, confidence uh, uh, interval, okay? So all the points which fall outside this uh, confidence interval are labeled or detected as anomalies, okay? So that's what uh, uh, we are seeing here. And then, uh, but as I mentioned, 99 is a uh, very high confidence, right? So if you want to be very high confident, then our range at each data point uh, will be quite wide, right? So we can set the confidence level. So if we set a confidence level of, let's say 70, this is how it looks like. Now, as compared to here, now we have detected more points as anomalies. The reason being, when we use the low confidence, our lower and upper bounds will be closer to the forecasted value, right? So the range, this range, for example, uh, we are seeing at every data point now is uh, shorter, right? So that's why more data points, for example, uh, compared to here, uh, let's say these, these uh, data points, uh, maybe this one, are now being detected as uh, anomalies, okay? So we can quickly try uh, different confidence levels. Uh, we can visualize uh, to figure out the appropriate confidence score uh, for our use case, okay? And one final thing, uh, as we know, this time series often comes with uh, what is called these exogenous features or uh, 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 just a fancy name for the feature values, right? Now, we don't have any uh, external features in this data set, but let's create some features based on the timestamp, right? So using this timestamp, we can derive number of features like what month it is or what year, what day of the week, so and so forth, right? Uh, so what we do is, so we are creating uh, two sets of features based on the month and the year, okay, using the timestamp. Now, month means, because we have 12 months, this data is at the daily granularity level, uh, this is going to create 12 features, right? So as you can see from here, month one, all the way up to month 12. So this create 12 features, and then year, that depends on how many years of data uh, we have in the data frame. So this data frame has data from 2007 to 2016. So this is going to be a binary variable. So we have all these additional features created uh, based on the year, okay? And then uh, we can compute uh, the weights or feature importance uh, similar to a traditional uh, machine learning model, okay? So this is how it looks like. Uh, seems like 2012 uh, is important in predicting are detecting the anomalies. So that must mean 2012 has more uh, anomalies, right? So if you look here, uh, so actually uh, maybe it's a little easier uh, with this graph. So 2012, it start here. So 2012 January and 2012 uh, uh, December. So this area has more number of anomalies as compared to any other area over uh, that year range, okay? So that's why it's detected uh, with uh, more number of, uh, are uh, highly important in detecting um, the anomalies. Uh, at 2007, uh, if you look at, as I mentioned, these models are autoregressive, right? So for, we use the first few data points to predict the uh, follow up uh, data point and then uh, we repeat the process. So for the first few data points, we don't have any forecast and hence we don't, uh, we can't detect if they are anomalies or not. So one shortcoming with this method is if we have anomalies at the very beginning of the time series, uh, we cannot uh, uh, detect them. Okay. 
So that's why uh, for 2007, uh, we don't have any anomalies. So we it did not show up here. And similar story for 2016, uh, somewhat similar, because for 2016, we have only January data available. So there is only one data, uh, one anomaly. Uh, that's why it is scored low. Okay. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, it's a very simple technique. I hope uh, you find it useful. Thank you very much.